the order at 515 August 30th is present. It would come George Forcier and Russ French or it lose your clerk. This first order of business is to approve the August 2nd meeting. Yeah. Discussion. Well, we, uh, I move to accept the minutes as written. I'll second that motion. Uh, Lena, I, I, I take it there are no minutes yet from the meeting you and I have. Well, that was a work session. No, no, that was a meeting. What yeah, meeting? The 16th. No, we didn't meet that night. We didn't. You and I met. We had a work, that was a work session. session. Yes, yeah, that was a work session. To, and I, have I have sure. notes, but we don't have to actually do formal minutes for that. Right. The notes should go in the, I should have a copy of those notes to put in the file with the minutes. Mm -hmm. There were some votes that you and I took on yes. a number of things. Yes, Excuse and I have them written down. Yeah, yeah, I definitely that. I should five. go over them with you. So you know, bring that up next week. Okay. Sure. Full business. Sure. If you want to give me the notes, I can try and read them and type them up. After I get them, I was done. I didn't ask you to type them up. I said, give me the notes and oh, I will type yeah. them up. Pretty much. Yeah. First <laughs> item, we do Roy Bishop's work. Yep. Roy came uh, last week. And went over everything, including all of the sales. He went over the utility values, of course. And um, based on sales, he recommended an increase of 10% across the board on all land and buildings to bring us up to a uh, an assessment level of 90s. 5%, so that we're valuing 95% of the market value. Um, no, we were that low. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. He said, oh, you know, you're not the only town doing this. Yeah. He said, everyone's having the same problem and having to do these jumps year after year. And so, um, yeah, that brought us up to where we needed to be. I asked him if the market is softening. He said, no, what's wrong is that there's no inventory. And that certainly is the truth. We have two properties on the market right at the moment. Um, One's on the con on, is contingent. I don't think we have the only, yeah, the only one that's not contingent now is, is the camp. The camp. Yes. And I have a feeling that will be very soon. Then there's a lot of interest in the Roaring Brook camp. I don't know, but it's off the market, so I believe there's a we do we I know mean, of a buyer. Right, we we have somebody who who won the bid on it, and they're just going through the long process of paperwork. Yeah, you know, HUD anything from HUD. Yeah, they don't expect to be able to move here until October. Right. Because of, you know, a government agency requires ten times the amount of yeah information than anyone which, else does. Which one in the, the, the big, big one. The big one. Yes, they put it on the market a couple. Three weeks ago, for seven hundred and thirty-five thousand, the whole thing. I don't know why, of course. Uh, well, when I win the lottery this weekend, I'm just going to buy it cash and <laughs> good build a big old house for myself back there, and uh, that's it. Well, All right, so that's so that's his recommendation. That's his recommendation. Yes, I put it in. The figures worked out very, very well. Um, I also talked with our advisor, Lauren, about generators and so on and so forth, and solar roofs. And she said, looked into it with one of the hires up in the Department of Revenue, and they said, solar roofs, the solar shingles. Because I had said the cost of the solar roof on a permit was 80 grand. I said, but you're getting a roof what? plus a solar system. And that's what's on the permit. That's includes labor anything else. So I said, can I somehow apportion that value and keep some of it as an actual roof and not tax the solar component? So they talked it over and came back with the fact that the solar shingles 
have a large uh, proportion of metal in their construction. And so change it to a metal roof. It had been asphalt, asphalt, so going to metal gives us some new growth and gives us a roof, and it still does not tax the solar. And she said, quite frankly, that's the best we can come up with at the moment. There haven't been enough sales anywhere of houses with solar roofs. But she said, that does recognize what you were worrying about, mm -hmm. you know, about losing the, roof, the value of a roof completely. And so she said, that's the way to go with that one. We do have some in nothing. Yes, one. Yeah. One. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it was new last year. And also on the generators, uh, I had told her that we had done a very thorough job of research and found that our values were off and that it was being depreciated on the 70 year. 70 year depreciation schedule, which is crazy when they're only 25 years warranted. So she said, okay, if you've done all this research and have the information from all these sources, and thanks to George, largely we do, uh, go ahead and change your valuation and change your depreciation schedule. So I've done that as well. And they're based on um, capacity. Yeah, based on capacity and age. And 25 years. 25 years. All right, a depreciation schedule of 25 years. I'll show you that a little bit later. Um, yeah, actually, actually, I'm kind of getting into the new subject here. What else do I have to say? He thought we were pretty much on the on the ball uh, as far as in general. Changes in power plant? Nope. He said, not this year. Uh, I said, will we do it before we get into a new revaluation in in 27? And he said, we might. But he said that the values uh, that they can get for the electricity is still somewhat limited by the auctions and everything else. So he didn't see any um, significant increase to value there. However, the um, the land is going up by the 10% and the building. And the, um, no, they let, no, it isn't. Uh, the rest of their land is going up by the 10% across the board. And under the solar array, that land is going up as well. You know, the array is built based on a prior, before it was turned on, we had developed a pilot uh, program with Nexan saying that based on capacity, rated capacity, this will be the valuation over the next 20 or 30 years. And so we build them based on that. There's a built-in one and a half percent per year booster. And um, that is built separately from the land because the people still own the land underneath it. Um, yeah, so the equipment and the uh, panels and all become personal property of next year. So that land is going up. That has gone up, yes. In fact, he stopped in this afternoon and popped in because I had to send the question off to him. Today, he was up in Adams, so he was coming down this way anyway. And he said, yep. Yep, raise it. So that's commercial property. That uh, yes, industrial, personal yeah. property. Yes. Yeah. The land is industrial. The um, Everything above the land is personal property the next hand. The land under the next dam solar arrays and it's industrial. Well, it hasn't been changed in zoning yet, but we're billing it as if it were because yeah. it's an industrial <clears throat> use on it yeah. on that land. That's legit, all apparently. Yes. Yep. Yeah, because we bill according to use. We you know we value according to use. Um, it's one of the reasons why I wrote to the planning board asking if some properties ought to be reconsidered for. In industrial zoning, but we get into spot zoning then. Yeah. Which used to be not acceptable. I don't know what that is. No, it's still generally not yeah. acceptable. Yeah. yeah. But the way it's spread out around town, that's the way it, it would happen. Yeah. So, but no, we can use, we can uh, qualify the land under uh, the use of the land. So the private landowner mm -hmm. is leasing this property to Nextant. Yes. Um, they're paying. 
taxes on that piece of property on an as, as on industrial the land. property. Yes, although the our industrial rate is exactly the same as the residential. Well, we so don't have different rates. So it's a distinction without a difference. Then. Pretty much. Pretty okay. much. And the 10% that Mr. Bishop came up with is based on actual real estate transactions of yes. the past year? Yes. We had enough of those to we looked justify. Yes. He looked at um, the last two years, actually, from July 1 of 21 to June 30th of this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We didn't have quite enough. It was just a little tight looking at only one year. Uh, especially, you know, to say yes, a 10%. So we went back another year, which we can do, and that just sealed it. Yep. Is that 10% is not on personal property? No. Yeah. Not on personal property, just on land and buildings. Yeah. And I've, I've thrown in the figures, and by far the greatest majority, probably 95% of the accounts go up somewhere between uh, 8.999 and 12. You know, there, there's a rounding factor in there based on the proportion of land to building or the other way around, that type of thing. Is there any kind of a uh, discount on the land because of topography, all that stuff kicks in. So the values round a little bit and there's some have new growth. And I found that last year, the program had not calculated chapter land 61A values correctly. So I went back through all of them and made the corrections. And there are about 85 accounts that have a change. Some are as little as a dollar and some are a bit more. And so I'd like to ask permission to talk to Jan about doing it as a, rather than doing out the whole formal abatement process, with a certificate and everything for each one, if we do it out as a list, sign the list and authorize, ask her to do it as a credit mm -hmm. on their account for this fall. What do you think of that idea? Well, it sounds bureaucratically easier at our end. Yes, she doesn't want to get hit with 85 abatements. I mean, it still works the same as far as um, overlay and everything goes, but uh, and who makes that? She makes that determination, or do we make that determination? I'd say we do it together. She may know some reason why it's not possible. With the approval of the accountant, also. Right, right, and the DOR. No. But I wanted to ask for your approval to move forward with finding out from the DOR if it's okay. Yep. Go ahead, Mom. Well, I'd certainly move that you try that approach. It sounds like you're administratively the simpler. And yes. From a property owner's point of view, it probably doesn't matter as long as they can see that money. Right. Right. Yep. Sorry. Okay. I'm on, oh, whoops. <laughs> Actually, the easier it's, right? it's what? It'd be easier for the property owners this way as well. Yes. They wouldn't have to fill out an application for That's right. an abatement. And, oh, gosh, yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, great. All right. So does that finish Roy Bishop? Yes. Okay, so now... He more or less suggested that approach to... Yeah. Now a review of outbuilding depreciations, rates, and values. All right, well, I already mentioned um, generators. generators. And we have approval to do the same thing for gazebos and propolis. Uh, outdoor furnaces are a bit more of a a mystery. I'm having a hard time finding. It's been difficult to find that information. They all say, you know, request a quote or request a quote if you look at an advertisement. And none of the building permits, of course, have a figure on them because they're not residential construction. So I think we're going to have to leave them as is for the moment. Um, so we're depreciating the outdoor furnaces over 70 years? Yes. But I need more information to be able to change that. Where did that come from? 70 years? That's how, that's what the 
uh, depreciation schedule is that it plugged into a dialer automatically. Mm -hmm. That they don't have a 25 year depreciation schedule. For the generators, I have to calculate the value on a spreadsheet and then I have to put it in in an override. Yeah. Created, you manually created the yes. schedule. Yes, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have that. Oh, that? I'll because show you. Agenda, uh, we can do the same thing <laughs> with so you know, I, I mean, the outdoor furnaces. That I'm having a hard time yeah, finding out what they cost to start with. Appreciation values on the they, and um, we're going to they have a warranty on them. Uh, they're going to start with the application. Mm -hmm. Twenty-five years. Years. But I, I, there again, we don't really see no, any warranty list. Yeah, I never really got that far. Yeah, yeah. I know. So it's always request a quote. Yes, yeah, quote. That, that's, you know, so I think we need to speak to some of the people in town who have. Yes. Yeah. All right. See. Yeah, so um, the uh, if we're going to pursue that, we kind of need to do it tonight because I'm trying to get all the figures into the state by Friday in order to meet Jan's schedule. How much? How urgent and necessary is it to do for this year's cycle? It isn't. Nobody, we can wait a year. Nobody's been complaining. No, guess. no one has. There can't be that many. No, there are about a dozen. I can't find what it slides so next no, so it crunches over and yeah. more time to do it thoughtfully. Yes. Yeah. No, there's not enough. Yes. I think I would feel fine with that. Yes. In these others, the gazebos, the drill, I've been able to find sales information. There's a lot of it out there. Mm -hmm. And so that's easy. And to put them on the 25, the 20 or the 40 year schedule uh, based on whether or not they're pressure treated and homemade or, or what. Um, so. I'm going to have to show you those on the screen. But one of the things we need to do is look at the these are pictures of those two groups of buildings. And I might have grouped them a little bit according to what I feel is the grade, because that is important too. We have to do this today because this is for this year for conversion. for are yes. from 61A to 61B is for this year. Yeah. So we need to vote on this today because next week is two weeks. Okay. Is it not? Well, it's already been processed and put in through with that, with the assumption that we would accept it. Oh, it has? Yes. It's already been processed and put it in as a B, just not voted on that. <laughs> right. Right. Let's vote on it. Take care of it. Okay. Yep. Roxanne is changing her chapter from 61A to 61B. That's uh, the application. Other way around. No. B to A. B, B to A. A. Yeah. Sorry. Yep. B to A. That's the application reflecting. So she's becoming a farmer. Yes. I got my sheet. Oh, I got Did you? to get an ad. Good. How many? Well, that's... I only got three, but I plan to breed them. So we'll see okay. how many we get. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right, then hold on. Yeah. Um, Make a motion, Lee. I move that I... we. Okay, I move to accept Roxanne Parent's application for the uh, change in chapter land from 61B to 61A for fiscal 24. A second. A second, that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Well, okay. Um, do you guys want to sign that second page, and I will get it processed in the morning. Okay. When get back from vacation. <laughs> so, when is there going to be another meeting to come in for other discussions? When? Uh, next week. Next week or two weeks? No. Well, at this time of the year, with preliminary values coming in and the state of looking our values, I'm, we're scheduling one every week okay. in case we need one. Oh, yeah. right. But our, yeah. the, I think the normal first and third Wednesdays of the month right. yeah. are the normal meetings. Okay. And the extra meetings will be strictly about. Yeah, because I came in the last two weeks ago and it wasn't canceled. Uh, 14. I, Russ was out. It was the 16th. 16th, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it was and I the meeting. And, yeah, okay. Um. So anyways, that was what I really think. Okay. All right. Want to give us a, a hint? Huh? 
Want to give us a hint of what you'd like to talk about? Oh, okay, I can. Um, I was just wondering what your discussion has been on, on the senior board plan. We had mm -hmm. a meeting with the select board. Mm -hmm. We're going to bring this it up. It's going to go on the uh, next floor. Right. It's on the calendar. This is, well, this is the, uh, the calendar on the website. Yeah. yeah. It'll be on the warrant at the December town meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you've already been you're working on it. Well, there's people who have requested it, so we'll put it on the warrant because it has to be accepted at a town meeting. Okay. Yeah. Because I hadn't seen any discussion. I'm watching your. Congratulations. Yeah, I couldn't shake your hand. I haven't met you. Before. I know. I'm sorry. Good luck. I hope you do great. And it's very interesting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. By the way, I don't hello. I meant to say hello. Hi. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Is everything all right? I just, um, wait a minute. Can't hear you good. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me fine? Okay. I just want to um, bring up that, remember the discussion I said, saw you? but maybe four weeks ago, I think it was, about the change of the date of the building. I did look into Tyler and the, the proper date is there. The date that was voted on at the meeting is the date that is now reflected in the system. Mm -hmm. Can you send me out something on that? Absolutely. When I get, I'm going to take, I'm taking the rest of the week off, but I can get it to you first thing next week. Is okay. that okay? So, so that's going to okay. be, so the bills that are, being sent out or being determined right now, they'll, that's. We're working on the pre uh, preliminary rates right now. Okay, so that's going to be taking the values. Yeah. Values. So that's going to so be taking. So it has that corrected date on it. Okay, okay. And so then that will be filed in my um, chart or file or whatever, because it yep. wasn't before. Yep. I can, um, I'll print you a new property card with the, showing the, the date that was voted on at the meeting and send it out to you Tuesday. Is that okay? Sure, that'll be Does good. That um, no. no, because we did that all at the same time. We abated it. We did it all at the same time. She just wanted to yeah. make sure that the right as built date was reflected forward. going forward. Uh -huh. Which I, I so had that, checked yeah. over. So, I'm sorry, Carla. So if, if that wasn't changed, then why it should affect the abatement, shouldn't it, or not? I don't Yes, your abatement is based on that corrected. Right, but we we figured out yeah, the abatement based on that then. date. We figured out the abatement based on that effective date that night when you were here. But when we handed you the property cards, we just hadn't printed printed out the new one, I guess. Mm -hmm. But we had adjusted the abatement based on that date that night that you were here. Yeah. If, I'm, if I'm remembering correctly. If I can say something, I was here at that meeting. That's why I said, if I can remember correctly, this was a long time ago. This isn't even on the agenda. So, <laughs> I, well, it's, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I don't believe we, uh, you, because I didn't have anything to say in it, agreed on the value at that night because the year was done and you were going to put it in the computer. You know, yeah, you know, I will go back through the notes and double check on those. I I'll go back. In, I'll go back in the minutes. That night. We can go back in the minutes and we can double check the abatement values, Carla. We'll make sure it's right for you. So you'll so you'll um, send me all that information to verify that you checked and explain absolutely. it. Absolutely, okay. absolutely, absolutely. Okay. I will do that when I return next week. Okay. And so my other question is, I got yeah. two checks. I got two checks on the abatement. How mm -hmm. do they figure that out? Who figures that out? Well, the first check would have been the first abatement, and then you could, you had come in and said it didn't seem right, so we did it again. And the second oh. check would be the amount that was reflect that it was added so to additional it. abatement owed. It was a, yeah additional. So the additional was out. only so the additional was only a dollar fourteen. That's on that's that kind of that dollar yeah. fourteen sounds more like it was the CPA. I would guess that it's a CPA. Yeah, did you get a check for the regular abatement and then a check for the CPA? Well, you know what? There's nothing on these abatement W23-25. No explanation what it's about or anything. Okay, those come from the treasurer. Let me see if I can get copies of them from her and then we can compare them to the um, certificates now, that we did. So these are supposed to be, to be determined, the abatement on these, from the time that from November, right? 
that we um, applied for these. Not when you guys sign them. Is that correct? From the application, I believe, yes. From the application. Right. Right. Okay. And so who does Jan, is, is Jan the one that figures this out or what information no. does she have? We figure the amount of the abatement. We send her the amount and which we give her a copy of the same certificate we gave you and she's supposed to write her checks based on that certificate. Because I got a piece of paper here that has a, a approved on it and written on there that says that's a different amount than what I received. Okay, well, that's something that if if you don't mind, yeah, could um, could you send me an email with the amounts of your, the checks you received mm -hmm. so yep. I can compare them with the certificates and take it up with Jan and see why there was why there's they weren't correct. Mm. Because okay. we give her the dollar amounts, but she's the one who writes the checks. Okay. Well, so if you if you could just send me an email sometime over the weekend and let me know how much the checks were, if you can remember. I got them right here in front of me. I know how much they are. Okay. So, okay. But what and I'm saying, can you see this? I'm sorry? Can you see Your this? Camera's or you... not on. Your oh, camera's, camera's not on. How do I turn <laughs> that on? Can you clue me in on how to turn that on? Would it be start video? Uh, yes. Okay. Unable. Okay, I guess I can't do it. I don't know. I'd have to go. I'm not that swabby on this thing. So, okay. So I'll I'll send you a copy of this that was stamped approved and everything, which is a different amount than um what I got. Okay. And that's what I'm and thinking. We'll what it was for, taxed for so much. Okay. Okay. I'll do that. I'll try and. Oh, let me just take your email. Is it? No. Clerk or send it to um, assessors at conwayma.gov. Okay. And I will start delving into that immediately Tuesday. Okay. All right. So, okay. I appreciate that. Sorry, All right, Carla. I, I thought we were supposed to get a copy of all this anyways when it was done, but I didn't. I thought I had sent it, but okay. if I didn't, I apologize. Yeah. Okay. All righty. Thank you. Have a good You're night. Welcome. All right, bye-bye. I think some of that may have been applied as a credit. Yeah. All right, back to the album. <laughs> yes. That's, uh, um, your mic's still on, love. I don't know if you want us to be able to hear your side of the conversation, too. I don't have a... <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't make a comment. In, oh, okay. To, no, I could hear you laughing, and I wasn't sure if you yeah. were talking to somebody else, and I didn't no, know if you no. wanted us to be able to hear that. Okay, perfect. Never mind. Okay, um, this is looking at pergolas around town. This is a picture of each one that we have. And so I looked at them according to how they're built and tried to make a logical progression here. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Let's see, lay them out. These two are the same. They're on the same house front and back. So they count as one. I was looking at how they were built, um, plain, fancy corner braces. Um, okay, she's gone. What? And I think you're right. I think some of that was applied as a credit yeah. toward her second. Second bill. Yeah. Yeah. Any things like finials, you know, added on for uh, decoration. That one's hard to make out under the wisteria. So I started with the low there. That seemed very similar to this. That one isn't even freestanding, actually. Uh, and it's just, you know, four by four. It's very, very simple. Um, freestanding one. These are attached to the house, but very simple design. So uh, fiberglass roof. Yes, that? it is. Yeah, that corrugated fiberglass. Uh, this one is quite old now, and it was just built in a very similar thing with some of the um, what do you call it? The crosshatch siding there. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. This one is heavier duty. 
it um, has the corner bracing. It seemed to have a bit more design to it. This one is closely related to that in that it actually has tape, uh, curved corner braces, but otherwise is a very simple uh, construction. Then we get up here into a bit more uh, elegant in design. There are not so many uh, posts along the long sides so that it has probably a more pleasing appearance and ease of use. And it has those finials and notice the trim around the corners where the finials are. And you see there's some tapered trim there. This one is very, very large. Maybe it belongs back over here with one of these. It does have the trimmed ends. Um, not really too fancy. It might be better off over so, here. So do we bill them by the square foot? By the square foot. But we have to determine their grade. Okay. All right. Yeah. And how many grades are there? Do we... uh, it's it's the fair, average, good, very good. So yeah. five or six categories. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's an excellent or a superior. And... Um, then it's the graph for the depreciation is the years of age versus the grade. And that gives us the value. Now. And these are now going to be depreciated in 25 years. Mm -hmm. This is on our page. Mm -hmm. Just so you know who did not. Thank you. Right. Because that concerned me a wee bit, but we didn't. You took care of it. Yeah. So um, here we're getting into one that's a much more significant design project uh, with the little corner straps here, the an elevated roof as opposed to the flat roofs that the other ones have. And then this one finally is, is quite elegant with uh, round Roman style columns or Doric really, or they're, you know, and then the extensions and the brackets. So I felt that one to be perhaps the fanciest of the bunch, but that these two might be superior. Maybe. So again, the categories would be uh, we'd be Boys. average, I would say, for all of those. Question is where to put this one of average construction? No, what's the range? Average, good? We don't have any that are just fair, I don't think. There you go from average to fair? A yeah. Oh, sort of fair, average, good. Very good. Very good. And yes. then yes. excellent. So fair in this context being the, the, the least wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or if it was poorly constructed or very simply and, you know, not even a full four corners supported using the house to support. Oh, yeah, that's pretty, pretty basic. It seems like. What's there is average, but the design is less than average. It's enough yeah. to hold up the hysteria. Oh, it's, yes. From an aesthetic point of view, it won't really do much. No, no, bigger and it would be covered. <laughs> yeah, so if there's, yeah. A, if there's a fair in the bunch, that would certainly seem mm -hmm. to be one. Um, Whereas I think these are more average. Now these plus this. What do you think? Well, this one's marginally better than that one. Mm-hmm. Question is, do we have to use that rating or can we just say good or very you know, average and very? Do we need? Well, that's what I was going to. Do we need five different? We categories? don't need that's five. We don't need five. We, need, we could do. First of all, the value we could do certainly per square foot. The average is right. Four. The value per square foot. Uh, How many categories do we need? Two? Uh, two. 
probably the there are five value possible. is very minimal. Yeah, so it's not like you need to slice it back in and it's not going to make a huge difference. I mean, clearly, this one, yeah. you know, it's nicer architecturally speaking if it's got columns and, and you know, you can't see horizontal pieces. These guys are all just pretty functional. I'm not particularly pretty, but they're yeah, so theoretically, I think, can you look at it from another way, whether they were purchased or whether they were home built? Yes, that's true too. Yeah, when you say purchased, you mean like Mark Ladd or, 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 or we got it at the, the shed here. Well, yeah. so. Right. The uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, let's see those. They start to purchase one. They. The herbalist, the lowest one I could find was $9.99 a foot. How much? That's $9.99. $10 a foot to purchase. And so was that made out of cardboard? No, actually that one's cedar. <laughs> which surprised me. Oh, let's turn off the machine. I, that. I can see two categories here. Yeah, the ones that are really nice and probably add some value for a prospective buyer like this one. As opposed to some of these other these others don't add much value at all. Yeah, I mean some of these others are pretty functional. Functional but not particularly aesthetic. Yep. I mean I can see one built along this line adding some value to the house in a way that something like this would not. Okay, here's the 40. 40 year. I agree. I agree. Stay at the 25 because yeah, it is. I can see two categories. We have superior and average. Yeah. We don't suppose these two could possibly be considered superior, but if we're looking at uh, goods, you know, average. That's what I'd like you to help me sort out. Once, I mean, I, I'm still debating whether we need to slice it that I, I, I would say average, good, and very good. Okay. And that's three, I don't know. Categories, right. What do you think, George? That's mm -hmm. probably mm -hmm. more than enough. Yeah, I don't think any more than that. Otherwise, you're really sort of mm -hmm. fine-tuning something mm -hmm. that probably doesn't need to be fine-tuned. Right. And I, you know, I'm not sure I'm capable so of saying this is, this is fair, but that's average. Mm -hmm. but, you know, Okay. Clearly, it, both ends of the spectrum are, are discernible from each other. Yes. Uh, the stuff in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if we did average, good, very good. I think you can tell in photos. Mm. If that's <laughs> I know there's plenty of growth on some of them. <laughs> on that one, I I partly figured out because of who owns the property and who they have working on it. We have an age on yes on each one. Sorry. Yes, yes, yeah. We know when we added them to the and if there was a building permit, I have that information as well. Okay.
not he's he's the part of making distinctions on the basis of his products. He's clearly at the center of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. This one is quite similar to that, except it's larger and newer. Mm, you should have sent those to me so I could have printed them in color. Mm. It would have been a little more detailed. Maybe, yeah. I'll have to see if I can get my color printer fixed too or replaced. Don't know if you're bothered to fix them anymore. Try to remember when things are, well, it's just, you know, when we have a slow to make on a based on black and white photographs. I haven't been there in person. I'm trying to slice it too thin. It's like, yeah. Okay. I guess this is the continuum, mm -hmm. I would agree. Uh, whether it's two categories or three. I think these are clearly in a separate category. Yeah. These two. And this one hovers next to that. It's hard to see. With the curves. Yeah. It does. It's got a little more attention to the architectural mm -hmm. aspects of it. It does. The rest of these really don't have a whole lot of that uh, you can see. That's right. You know, Artistic architectural elements are part of the design. We can go. All, these are all very functional, basic, right. rectangular. Right. Uh, so they can be average. I would think. That group? So are we voting on these independently or as a group? Well, let's get them sorted and then, you know. All right, well, I think they're pretty well sorted. Okay. Except that I probably agree with this. Okay. That's good. <laughs> okay. So we call these average, good, and very good or excellent. So moved. Uh, I guess that's what was that? What was the last category? Is this, well, sort of like A, B, and I say, C. Right? I know it. I think this one's a very good, and these would be average, excellent. Average, good, and excellent is what. Yeah. Okay. Is this grade or condition you're voting on? This is grade. No, oh, average for those. Good for those. Very good for these. Yeah, I'll concur. Okay. So moved. Do we have a motion? She did. Made the motion. I made the motion. Second, second. Yeah. All in favor. All right. Aye. All right. Okay. That's carried. That's discussed. That's a tough one. Okay. I'm just marking the read upon. Motion to vote on grades of pergolas as a group as discussed. Yeah, only good, excellent. <laughs> and I'm not even putting. I'm not even yeah. putting that in. <laughs> I can't even go there. <laughs> There's the depreciation table. Um, it goes for forty years. Yes, yeah, so over forty years with values per square foot based on uh, Lowe's, Home Depot, Clover Farms, a um, couple of other places I found. They're not in our Marshall and Swift book. They don't have them, but you can see they, they lose value pretty quickly. Oh, we just said they were based on 40 years. Does it need to go 40 years or is it a 25 no. year thing? We can do a 25 if we prefer. This is what the generators are, the 25 year schedule. We would just change the uh, right. initial value. All I have to go on is my own personal experience, which is yep. if it was built out of pressure treated. It's got a what forty year warranty warranty on the materials theoretically. If you made it out of something like cedar or some kind of painted material, mm -hmm. I have no idea how long that will last. Mm -hmm. um, I stained some pine two bys in my original pergola, and those the stained paint pine parts are you know had to be replaced a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. So they lasted maybe twenty years. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have, don't the pressure treated have to... parts are all the uprights and they're all fine still. Mm -hmm. um, don't we have to pick one and or do it or are you able to say, okay, well, this purple is just cedar or whatever, and we'll give it this table and this one's made of pressure treated or synthetic, whatever, and mm -hmm. we'll Let's give see. it this table. It's got something made out of this is of... made out of truck deck and all right. This I mean, can we Last have forever, multiple right. tables for purple? 
<laughs> yes, based on the materials. Happily, we're not getting into Trek deck yet <laughs> with but, that. But on deck surfaces, but yes. But the question on the table is what? how long a depreciation period, mm -hmm. I guess right. I'm saying, if 20 at one end, because if you made mm -hmm. all that untreated material, it wouldn't last much longer than that. Even if you painted it regularly. So we can't have just one depreciation schedule. We'll have, have that, a pick and juice for, for building. Can we do that? Yep. Can you have just one depreciation schedule for all these types of items? I mean, the generator and everything rather than Absolutely. having a different hue. Mm -hmm. That was, I, I, I mean, I had thought originally that we had talked about um, 25 years for all outbuilding type things. But I... I most practical matter, you figure it's going to be between 20 and 40 years because you've built the thing or or beyond because some have made yeah. it all out of vinyl, some material, some yeah, plastic. It would theoretically last forever. And certainly in our future site visits, we're going to be looking very carefully for these types of things too, you know, for additional information about these structures. There's a 20 year. Is it going to make it complicated having a different depreciation chart That's based on credit, based on each particular I'd like to go with one. Yeah, I was going to say, because you're going to have to go out and look at each mm -hmm. one. And so decide, well. 25, so you want to keep these at 25. Is that easier? Or That's easier. If it's, if it's... Sure. And I, I think 25 is a nice sort of average number because um, if, if it's pressure treated material, it might last longer mm -hmm. than that. On the other hand, you know, what kind of fasteners did you use mm -hmm. that might or might mm -hmm. not fail after 25 years? And really, it's been 25 it? years. Are we ready to rebuild it? Right. Yeah. Yeah, is it robust <laughs> enough that Better it lasts 25 years under the weight of, you know, there's a lot of other factors besides yeah. just how long will the material last? How much then 25 is a logical? Well, I think so. I mean, mine was a combination of materials, and mm -hmm. after 25 years, I had to start rebuilding it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, good example. So you might not like it after 25. Well, there's <laughs> well, there's that other question too. You know, you just things well, change. It's like kitchens. Sure. Right. 25. If you know, it's so 25 years ago. Yeah, this uh, kitchen will last for another 75 years. But do I really want to look at it? Exactly. Sure. <laughs> so I well, think this 25 is the, would be a good. That's the 25 year schedule. We need to vote on it. Yes. Well, I'll, I'll move that we set up a 25 year depreciation schedule for gazebos and parklets. Yep, as well as generators. Uh, yeah. And that's what I'd like to have also on the outdoor furnaces. But as I say, I can't do anything much with that yet until I get more initial values, purchase costs. When you say outbuildings, does this also include sheds? No. no. Okay, so gazebos, pergolas, generators. Yep. Is all we're... Yes. I have a second. The, the, but they're different numbers. You're just talking about the, the numbers of years over which you... Of years and of an initial cost. Yeah. In other words, a pergola is going to come in at a lot less per square foot uh, yeah. than a than a gazebo. You know, so the cost would occur. Right. All we're voting on is the number of years. Of yes. Mm -hmm. right. I the second. Numbers, the dollar amounts. All those later. Um, Hi. 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 Okay. That makes the matter a bit easier. I would think. Yes. Okay. And we're making this change, by the way, because. Previously, there was a seven year, year depreciation. It made no sense. That's right. That's right. It's not like we weren't taxing people for gazebos before. That's right. We were. Um, but I think this is going to be a value that's better uh, reflected in the market. Oh, another source we had for the generators was talking to two appraisers and three real estate agents who are very, very active in this area for their opinions as to what they would add to a sale. Well, the, one of the answers was that certainly after you get to a certain quality of house, it's really an expected feature almost um, and probably will be more so in the future. But um, As the grid becomes more and more unstable, mm, people will be losing power more frequently. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And our lives depend on electricity. Yeah. Yeah. So, get Tesla solar panels, Tesla batteries, and a Tesla rocket ship, and we should be fine. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, I found out the hard way when we had our solar put in, we were all for putting in the backup batteries, you know, so it, you know, and, yeah. and because we heat the house and cool the house with mini splits, it was made clear they won't, you can't have them because. That if it if it goes out in the winter and you need this to power your mini splits, it's going to drain it in a matter of a couple of hours, and then you're done. 
That's why you need a rocket ship. Yes. yes. So yes, we didn't spend the money on it because right. if, it, if the batteries aren't strong enough, if that you know, or mm-hmm. the generator isn't strong enough to keep your heating system going. Yeah. And I'm not going to install an oil heating system just so I can have right as a backup. Backup battery. Yes. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> it's very convoluted after a yeah. while. It's like, yeah, no. Yep. <laughs> um, okay. So yep. is that all on the depreciation rates and values? Or are we- yes. Yes. Um, and I'm going to have to put these figures in for those specific items before I have the final preliminary values. But um, I can get that done. We could extend this meeting to sometime tomorrow or whatever, or not. Yeah, but you mean adjourn the meeting? Not adjourn. Not adjourn. Not adjourn. Just, Just, yeah. We've done it before, but I'm not sure. There will be no owl, though. Well, it's mm-hmm. going to be a five-minute thing to look at the new values and say yes or no. Um, oh, no, we're already, we're already a continuation posted. of this yes, meeting. Yes, it's a continuation of this meeting. A non-recorded, non-zoomed continuation of the meeting. Oh, that's not a good thing. Yeah, because... Yeah. Well, tomorrow's Thursday. Yes. What, could we do it on Friday? Time is of the essence. Time is of the essence. It All really right. is. Are you making me come in on my days off? No. No. Well, we are if you need this. So, so, fill me in then. You have to put these in. I have to, I'm going to have to put these in, into calculate out the exact values and put them into each account. As someone who has a generator, I've got to figure it out and put it in that account. So, is everything else completed? Yes. So, can we vote to accept this? Yes, yes, we'll, this we'll, approach. We'll accept this to be included in the. If you're going to continue, if you're going to continue it to about the same time tomorrow night, I can. Well, or we can take this Russ's approach here. We're voting okay. to take use this approach on these out outbuilding, you know, detached items. And I've pretty much already told you the recommend, you know, Roy's recommendations and what we did about that. Right. And how it's worked out. The only difference is that some people may have had new growth and therefore their new figure is more than 10%. Right. Or in one case, a gentleman came in today to talk, talk to me about his house. You can see it there and said it is not as finished as we had thought. We added up around 85% last year and we went down through the list together. And it's really only at 70%. And so I'd like you're okay to change that, by the way. Okay. Can we finish one motion before yes. we do another motion, please? Yeah. But the only reason <laughs> that things are beyond the the 9 to 11 range is because of a change in the structure. Right. But I think what Russ is saying is could we tonight approve final preliminary values. That's what I'm mm-hmm. saying. Contingent on you plugging well, in the new numbers. Big, numbers in yes. that we agreed on. Because yep. we wouldn't, under the normal course of events, go through every single property number mm-hmm. or even the changes because of new construction or what have you. Right. We sort of voted those as we went along. Yes. So it's not like we're shortchanging the process by doing this. That's true. Well, so changes. motion to approve final preliminary, preliminary values. Okay, okay, values. Okay. So if we're not shortchanging the process, mm-hmm. I'd be in favor of a, a contingent vote, you know, vote contingent on you making these changes. Mm-hmm. Um, contingent on changes to depreciation tables. Changes to values of generators because you both well, you're, you're not you're changing the depreciation table. I'm not, changing the values. Well based on because well, they're changing the well changing the table. Effectively changes the value. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but we're saying we don't need to see those specific contingent numbers on specific property. That's for us. No. Just, I'm just going to say contingent on changes to gazebos, pergolas, generators. Yes. That's a heck of a motion. <laughs> <laughs> we Third, get specific here. Jens. Okay. Who wants to actually make that motion? 
Uh, George just did. George did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is sure. that a motion, George? That was, yeah, that was a motion. Sorry. Following chair's cue. Following okay. chair's cue. <laughs> Who's seconding motion? Well, chair will second. Okay. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Now, can we talk about what's his name with his father? Oh, sure. Because, yeah, yeah if you're going to do another motion on that, yeah, then that's for sure. I need the approval on that. Yeah. Uh, oh, my goodness. We went over pretty carefully. There were two bathrooms. Now there's sort of one. Things like that. Uh, no kitchen cabinets, no interior trim. Um, doesn't have the kitchen sink in yet. Did we do. When did we do the inspection? When when did we? There hasn't been one in several years, and there's also no back porch. Um, so I said we're going to be, if we, you know, whether we accept these or not, we're going to be wanting to come for a good inspection. Mm -hmm. uh, Shelburne Falls Road. What's his initials? DM. Thank you. That's what I thought. I just wanted to yep. make sure I had the right person. Yep. DM. To um, you know, verify these things. I mean, if he's saying we're taking his word for it, yes. that, that mm -hmm. this isn't complete as right. much as we thought. Mm -hmm. and no, we definitely we have to. Figures, where did we get our 85% complete? Yes. That had been based on a conversation that wasn't as anywhere near as complete as this. Conversation with the homeowner. Yes. Just in passing. This is our, our chart that we use all the time. Right. Yeah. And so it was really good to have it and to sit down with somebody and do it that way. And he was aware of the 85% because it's what was applied last year? Yes. So ahead of this year, he shows up to say, by the way, I haven't done any more work on the place and it wasn't 85%. Last right, year. or it was too high last year. And I looked at it, it was 85%. And I said, well, let's look at this. Mm -hmm. And so after we went so through it, it came out at 70. He's, he's not going to come back and want an abatement on last year's. No. Okay. No. You can't. No, too he's, late. He's past his 30 days. He can't. Oh, yeah. But um, I was glad he came in and we had a very good discussion. <laughs> yep. So, so this gentleman's chipping away at a renovation, it sounds like, as opposed to yes. banging away at it. And yes, exactly. Chipping away yep. for the past 30 years. Well, no, no. This is just, <laughs> this is just the past few years. Uh, <laughs> There was an incident that pretty well destroyed the building. And so it's being rebuilt out of pocket. Mm. As as, as, as yeah. one can afford it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That, that takes a while. That takes a while, yeah. And it isn't like they're young children or anything, you know, and and so the folks who live there don't mind roughing it a little bit as things go along in order to not have to have a Financial obligation. And they have the most important things. They have a roof yes. over their head. They have yep. heat when it's cold, and they have water. And all yep. you know. And he said, you know, not all the sheetrock is taped and mudded yet, but it's all up and things like this. All right. So, someone want to make a motion? All right. I'd like to move that we accept a seventy percent completion value on this particular property, and that we will uh, get out there before the first of the year, anyway. That's not part of the motion. I know that's not part of the motion. I have motion, yeah, motion to approve change in completion percentage to DM property to 70%. Mm -hmm. Contingent on site visit? No, not contingent no. because we are changing it tonight. We're changing it so we can change it in the valuation. Right, I mean, for the bill coming out. In the preliminary. But we will make a site visit, yes. Yeah. Well, with the understanding that we'll follow up with the site visit so that we can see it ourselves at mm -hmm. some point. Yep. He said that'd be okay. Let them out at a time. All right. I'll yep. leave them off. It's all moved. Yes. Yes, I can do this. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Thank you. No, we thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Well, you're it says the... meeting wrap up. That would be the motion to adjourn. That would be the motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else? I mean, we have a, we have a meeting September 6th. Yes. I will be here for that. You know, I can't surprise my vacation. I'm so oh, sorry you had to do that. Vacation. Made so you fun. need to retire. That way you're always on vacation. <laughs> I know a lot of you would envy and then of course, with then of course I call him when somebody comes in and wants, you know, has a couple of questions. George, you can down. He says, sure. Yeah, well, <laughs> he you're said. lucky you caught me. I 
before I got out into the backyard to yep. build it. All right, and so I have a motion to adjourn. Uh, second motion. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned. 615.